you can't take the vertebrae out of your back. Just there should be some kind of sanctions against that place until they make they make some type of change. You can't take the vertebrae out of your back just to fit inside of someone's ceiling. Mm -hmm. You have to stand up full and proud, stand up erect. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We gonna do it together. So it looks like Cat Williams gained another supporter, and it's none other than Terrence Howard, who is now spilling the tea on how he got fed up with Hollywood trying to put him in a dress. According to Terrence, Hollywood is really out here trying to strip black men of their masculinity, and he's throwing shade at the industry, claiming they accused him of being hard to work with just because he wasn't down for playing certain kinds of roles. Now, we've all heard the whispers about how Hollywood is allegedly pushing this agenda to make black men look more effeminate, and heavyweights like Dave Chappelle and Cat Williams have been calling it out, saying black actors are pressured to wear a dress on screen before they can level up in fame. And while some fans are now saying this is not such a big issue as people are trying to make it, it looks like Terrence is standing his ground. In fact, word on the street is that Hollywood slapped Terrence with a difficult to work with label just because he turned down a role where he was asked to be in a dress. But Terrence is over being blackballed by the industry and he just spilled the beans that he just might quit acting for good because Hollywood's agenda got him sick. That's the stuff you've got to watch. See, that's why you got to clear this stuff up. You've got to watch the stuff that they put out there, right. you know, because they're just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. So you've all probably heard by now that Cat Williams reignited the conversation surrounding the rumored agenda in Hollywood about black male actors being pressured to wear dresses on screen before they reach that A-list status. And now some sources are claiming Terrence Howard is one of the many talented actors who got blacklisted for saying no to the dress. Now Terrence has been a talk of the town kind of dude for some time, and that's because his personal life drama often took the spotlight away from his acting. But let's not front on his talent though. Back in the early 2000s, Terrence was on the verge of being the next best leading man. His Oscar-winning performance in Crash had folks thinking he was going to be the hottest actor of his generation. Jump to 2008, Terrence showed up in the Marvel blockbuster Iron Man as Rhodey, and even though he's holding down a side gig, he's cashing in as the highest paid actor in the movie. But fast forward to 2010, and what do you know? Don Cheadle steps in as Rhodey in the Iron Man sequel. Word on the street is Terrence got hit with a massive pay cut offer, like 50 to 80 percent for Iron Man 2. But here's the kicker. We never found out if he said no or if Marvel pulled the plug on him. Entertainment Weekly spilled the tea back then, saying Terrence might have had a temper issue and was a handful on set. But Terrence didn't take that narrative lying down, and he claimed he got tagged as the angry black man on purpose, especially after he started speaking up about Hollywood's agenda to emasculate black men. Now, this whole Hollywood trying to push a more feminine image on black men is not a fresh idea, and many black comedians and actors have publicly spoken out about it. Take Eddie Griffin, for example. He was one of the OG voices throwing shade at Hollywood for making black actors and comedians wear dresses on the big screen. Eddie spilled the beans on Hollywood's rumored dress wearing agenda all the way back in 1999 in his comedy Foolish, where he not only starred, but also wrote the whole script. In Foolish, Eddie takes on the role of Miles Foolish Ways, an up and coming comedian hustling to make it big in Hollywood. Now here's the kicker. There's this unforgettable scene where the studio big shots are trying to talk foolish into wearing a dress for a role and telling him all the A-listers have done it. So what do you think? It's never been done before. Three lovable drag queens driving cross country, helping middle America solve its problems. Y'all want me to wear a dress? Foolish, this isn't a throwaway role. You'll be carrying the emotional energy of the movie. Man, it's, it's not that I don't appreciate the offer because I do, but... All we're asking you to do is to take the script home, read it, and make a decision. Then make the decision. Foolish. There's a lot of money about it. We're talking a major motion picture here, Foolish. Now flash back to 2006 and Dave Chappelle spills the tea on Oprah's show sharing that he experienced a wild incident where he got pushed to wear a dress for a movie role with Martin Lawrence and the way he described it sounded like a scene straight out of Foolish. <laughs> he put this dress on and it, huh? 
What? The prostitute? Nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. The, that should have been in the discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So fast forward a bit when Kevin Hart was asked to comment on Dave's story, and he just shrugged it off, saying that kind of thing never happened to him. Definitely haven't ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have uh, tax liens are very simple. You see, every county limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. But just a few years later, Kevin ends up in an SNL sketch in a dress, and it was like a game changer for his career. Suddenly, Kevin's popularity and success skyrocketed, allegedly all thanks to that dress-wearing stint on SNL. But the dress saga doesn't stop there. Cat Williams jumps into the mix, claiming the whole dress deal is tied to whether you choose to dance with the Illuminati or not. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. I'm saying um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. <laughs> so now I'm saying why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. Okay. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. Back then, most folks brushed off Kat's words as some wild conspiracy theory. Fast forward to today, and people are revisiting his words and saying there might be some truth to what he was throwing out there. So during Kat's recent appearance on Club Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp asked him about Dave Chappelle walking away from a massive $50 million deal shortly before he revealed that whole dress incident. And you won't believe what Kat dropped. Turns out, he had to pass up on some fat contracts too, all because they came with strings attached. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can say them so freely. But Kat didn't stop there. He also claimed that Martin Lawrence tried to put him in his first dress for Big Mama's house. And when Kat shut that down, Brandon T. Jackson swooped in and took the role. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We gonna do it together. We gonna do some buddy cop. I said, Martin, you got my mother word. My go do what you gotta do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know, we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too. I almost died. And I gotta read this script from all these good white people. Where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? You already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. We can be playing a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And that's who they went and got. Twice I said it, they went and got him. Just like I'm telling you, I had that other dude's work. I had all of it. Now, circling back to Terrence Howard, reports recently emerged that this whole dress thing was one of the main reasons Terrence turned his back on Hollywood. All right, let me fill you in on the latest interview with Terrence. When they asked him about the buzz going around that he got the boot from Iron Man 2 because of anger issues and not being the most cooperative on set, Terrence shut that down real quick and made it crystal clear that he wasn't about to let Hollywood bosses tell him what a black man should look like on the big screen. So according to Terrence, black actors are getting pushed to embrace a more effeminate vibe if they want to hit the big leagues. He said, my daddy taught me, never take the vertebrae out of your back or the base out of your throat. I ain't raising sheep, I raised men. 
stay a man. Everything is androgynous, you know? The more successful men are now the effeminate. And then in another recent interview with Revolt, Terrence doubled down on his thoughts with Hollywood having a bone to pick with strong black men. And he said that only white men are allowed to be both strong and non-threatening at the same time. The man has been demonized, Terrence said. With the new formula, most men are made to be effeminate and not have their power or sense of strength. They allow white men to be able to be strong. But when it's black men, it's seen as a threat. He also added, I don't want to remove a few chromosomes to fit into someone's story. So I feel they need to expand their stories to allow men to be men and simultaneously appreciate a woman's beauty. Now, as you can imagine, the internet is serving up a buffet of opinions on this whole saga. Some folks are quick to throw around the label conspiracy theorists at Terrence and Cat Williams. And they're also saying we have way bigger problems to worry about than actors wearing dresses. Someone said, as a 42 year old black man, the last thing I'm worried about in my life is comedians wearing dresses. Rap, hip hop, and hood culture are way more threatening to my life than this. And another one added, putting on a dress is for comedic value. Medea, Shanene, Nutty Professor, White Chicks, Big Mama's House were all hilarious. Making people laugh is what it's all about. Someone told people the narrative of a dress being used to emasculate men and y'all ran with it. But on the flip side, there are many fans giving Terrence and Kat some major props for pulling back the curtain on Hollywood's shady side. And they're convinced this whole dress thing is more sinister than it seems. One person wrote, Terrence Howard is absolutely correct. This ain't no conspiracy. They all know the agenda. And another one added, I'm with Terrence. Brothers are still enslaved and don't seem to care. All because of the almighty dollar. They are definitely trying to emasculate our men and our men are cool with it. But let me know how you feel about Terrence Howard's comments on the dress controversy. Do you think there's really an agenda behind the way Hollywood portrays black men?